so we're back over at our normal shooting ground, normal photography spot. You probably recognize this. This is the burial ground, the natural burial ground right next to the workshop. And I've brought this absolutely stunning Series 1. Now, the story behind this, um, and I'll include some pictures, I found this in a barn while I was trying to buy something else. Now, I don't really know a great deal about Series 1s. However, I've always wanted one. So when I saw it, I initially was just goofing over it a little bit because that's what you do when you see a Series 1. And, you know, I was chatting to the owner about it, had bought the other vehicle, um, and he, he suggested that he would part with it. And I thought, well, I've got to own it. You know, this is one of those things that, you know, I bought and, and just had to tick the box. I've never owned a Series 1, and, and ultimately, in my mind, this is where it all starts with Land Rover. This is a 1955 Series 1 86-inch wheelbase. So it's not the first Series 1. That started in around 1950. But this is probably one of the more unique ones as the 86-inch wheelbase was only produced for three years. So a little bit more sought after. But very interesting all the same. So 67 years old. And as you can hear, it purrs, purrs away. I've driven it up from the workshop. This was a full chassis off restoration eight years ago. So although the patina is still there, the bottom half of the body has been, well, reasonably well painted, I suppose, but it's been painted um, on the bottom half. The top half is as it was in sort of a cream, um, unrestored, the wheels are unrestored, but the chassis and the frame are absolutely immaculate. I don't think I've ever seen such an old car with such good condition chassis. Inside, it's got a standard CSW configuration. You'll have to excuse the mess. That actually does tidy up very well, but the dog has been in the back. He's off having a sniff over there. Everything is present. It even has what they call the pork pie lights. These were replaced normally by a lot of people that owned a Series 1. As you can imagine, as it went through the ages, it needed more modern electrics. So it's quite rare to see those. The other thing that's quite rare to see is the travelators. Now, they actually work as well, and this is probably one of the more fascinating things. There's a little switch on the dashboard, there's the horn and the travelator. I just find that amazing. What a lot of people did with the Series 1 was, was get rid of that um, and put the indicators on the front, which spoils it. Obviously, this has its original side lights and no indicators, so that's one of those things. Uh, another thing to look out for. Now, the other thing that really fascinated me about this car and although it has 12 volt electrics and it starts on a button, it has a starting handle. Now, I couldn't believe this when I saw it. The starting handle, I don't know, I don't know how rare that is in itself, but it, it goes through the bumper onto the crank and you, you turn it over by hand. I, I mean, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm just fascinated by something like that, having never seen one in real life. I think this is, me probably far better as a usable classic than a completely restored one I think I would be scared to drive a completely restored vehicle so I'm quite happy about this so I'm gonna run this up to the calf today and have a nice breakfast and a cup of coffee in this thing and I can guarantee you that this will attract all kinds of attention when I get out on it later on today this in the UK is actually tax and MOT exempt because it's so old it doesn't require uh, an MOT test or tax anymore so there's also the added bonus of that sorry guys I just had to grab the dog because he disappeared into the field chasing rabbits Bodge is now back in the car to give you an idea of the size of this car Bodge is a fully grown golden retriever and he fits in there quite well he does make the car look small though I will say that I'm sort of not feeling that it's that small when you're driving it but I did drive it, so a couple of things that, that are slightly different about series. And anybody who's into a series over there will probably already know this, that the, the track on this car was a lot, lot narrower than a Defender. Um, it had much narrower axles, and it also had leaf springs instead of coil springs. Now, the other main thing with this is that it's very, very basic. It doesn't have heaters, it just has uh, the coolant system, to cool the engine and that's it it doesn't have any internal heater at all it has one windscreen wiper and if you've noticed that in the video that is not because one's missing that is just because that's all it's got and that is a 12 volt windscreen wiper opposed to a hand operated one and i think if 
I can remember how to turn the bloody thing on. Oh, hang on, I can that. No, I don't remember how. Oh, no, there it goes. A bit slow, so that probably wants a little bit of attention. But in the 50s, that was what you got. You got some basic, basic bits. It wants a bit of a tidy up inside. I mean, this is this is farm mechanics at its best. This spent a lot of years on a farm locally. We were offered the opportunity to buy this from the farmer directly, which was nice of him. But you can probably imagine this kind of thing has been maintained on a farm and, and just run around. I mean, they did tell me that they've been using this vehicle quite regularly to run around the farm. Um, the other interesting fact was that, you know, eight years ago when it was restored, he put it back together himself. So that was something that I thought was quite cool. Now, some of the pictures I'll send you, I didn't really get an opportunity to take many pictures of it because it was a dark barn. It was covered in scrap pieces of wood. And it, yeah, it was like the worst environment for taking pictures, but it was the most exciting barn find because I don't know what it is about a barn find, but an inch of dust on anything, for some reason, just, just does things for me on a petrol head level that other cars don't. So yeah, I was really excited to see this thing covered in dust. I wish I was around when they pulled it out, but what had happened was after we'd agreed the sale, they actually turned up with it the next day on a trailer. So I was a little bit upset that I didn't get to do any footage of it coming out of the barn, but you could probably gauge the idea of what it looked like from the pictures that I'll put up. But yeah, I, I initially just had to do the, the preliminary checks like everything, but we have a huge history pack for this including all of its taxation life and that's all of the discs that it had as well as all the MOT certificates and bits and pieces that it's had over the year but really this is about as good as it gets I think for series one this is a usable classic with a bit of patina and a very very cool story this is part of British history you know you think this has been around 67 years there really isn't many cars left in Britain today that are this old that it's quite quite frankly amazing. And I think it's the sort of thing that I'm more than happy to part with. I would really like for this to go to a customer that, that is going to appreciate it. I think unfortunately, I just like the idea of this thing sitting on the driveway, but beyond that, it, it really isn't something I'm going to use if I'm being realistic. It's not something that I'm particularly into from a driving perspective, but if money was no option and there was a way I could keep this car on the driveway, it would stay there forever. I think the only things I would like to do to this, and you might well see that happen before it's actually advertised for sale, is I'd like to put a row of three seats in the front, some newly upholstered seats in the front. They come from a company called Exmoor Trim. I'd like to do the, the green that they come in, because I think originally it's hard to tell that these seats were green. Obviously there's some bits that don't match. I think the other thing I'd like to do is maybe, maybe do something with the inside of the doors. I'd like to maybe at least paint them in the same green and then paint that um, primer panel in green as well. These are obviously galvanized parts, so they're not gonna rust. I just don't like the red. Um, and then there was there was sort of talk about maybe painting the top and the wheels, um, color match the wheels to the body in green, and then paint that in ivory white, just to tidy it up. As I think the bottom half of the body is in such good condition, and the paint is actually so nice that it, it would almost look a little bit better. I think probably more, or closer to being restored looking. But I'm going to get off now as Bodger's obviously getting impatient. I'm going to drive it um, down to the calf. Uh, I'll try and get some footage of that if I can. But yeah, as you can see, it's just been sat here purring. This vehicle's actually covered 61,000 miles, which I find incredible. This car, as you can probably imagine, is a lot of fun to drive, but it's not the sort of car you jump in the motorway or jump on the motorway and, and, and hit 80 miles an hour in. You know, it's got a just over two litre petrol engine fitted with a four speed auto, uh, four speed manual gearbox, sorry, and overdrive. So, I mean, it probably gets up there. I'm about to try and find out how fast it'll actually go, but yeah, she just sits there and purrs. For something that had been sat in a barn for the past two years untouched, a fresh tank of fuel and a carburetor clean has done it the world of good. I hope you've enjoyed the, the very short story and uninformed story on this series one. I am doing an awful lot of research on Series 1s and just trying to get my head around all of the ins and outs of it. And if I find out anything interesting in the next couple of days, I'll add it to the video and come back to you. Guys, I just couldn't resist. I figured I would also just show the versatility of this thing. So, other than a little bit of help with the lift, I had to lift the roof section off. I managed to get all of this off on my own in about 10 minutes. I've only taken the door off for illustration. I'm going to put it back on to drive on the road. As this is such an old car, it wasn't even fitted with seat belts as factory. So 
I've folded the windscreen down, taken the door off, and I'm going to take it up the road again. Um, having achieved 50 miles an hour in this thing, it actually does go at modern speeds as well. What a cool car.